But Alfred, walk us through what exactly the key differences are when it comes to the U.S. elections. I mean, we know Ghana, ours is especially parliamentary, first yeah. past the post. Whoever yeah, wins, absolutely. even by one, you win. But the U.S. elections, the dynamics are different. What's it like? And very much so. And, and th there's a lot of play with this election. And you, you'll think a number of things. Very crucial indeed. We're going into the, the United States, going into this election with a first female who hopefully will, has the high chance of becoming the first female president of the United States. And then also with a man who is a former president and seeking a re-election. This is the first time. So there's a lot of historic issues at play in this election. If Kamala Harris becomes president, the first female president of the most powerful nation on the planet Earth, and, and her husband is going to be the first, first gentleman. Get old man. <laughs> you know, and then you have Donald Trump coming in as the first former president who, if he wins, will become the first former president who has sought a comeback and, and won an election as well. Yeah. And you have that similarity in Ghana too, mm. you know, but if, if you look at John Mahama and, and even Professor Jinnano Poko Ajiman as well, if he be, becomes president, his we'll running mate becomes the vice first president. female vice president. You can draw those similarities and those uh, power lines at, at, at play. But then again, if you look at the voting system as you earlier indicated over time there's been that issue of voter turnout but in 2020 the, there was there was an increase an appreciable showing of the eligible voters who came out to vote over 160 million of them in fact there are 344 million and over el eligible voters in this election going into mm. this election as we're having it now as of yesterday over 76.4 million people had already voted with the early voting and mm. then also the mail voting you you realize that here in Ghana we, we have early voting but that's limited to just you know you and security I journalists services, security and services then, and those yeah. people will be playing one role or the other on election day but in the United States the early voting is not limited to essential service providers as well as you just heard uh, AGK the honorable AGK the one we just spoke to yeah. he's already cast his ballot you would have the mail system as and well. And Kelly is also because of their numbers, Absolutely. because you don't expect over, over 344 million people, million people turning to, up yeah, it's on going election to be day or period. I mean, but, but with the mail voting, look, you don't want to talk about that in Ghana, especially on issues of transparency and so on. <laughs> if you want to go and cast your ballot and you just put it in your mail yeah. and, and leave, who's going to snatch it? Anyway, but the electoral college system is one that is pretty interesting, Martin. And as you indicated, we are strictly popular voting where people turn up we, we count what, what the ballot or the vote on election day parliamentary presidential and then those who have the highest votes that's why we have the 50 plus one rule that if you are able to get 50 plus one as a presidential candidate you are you are also pronounced as president of the republic of ghana well that's not a strict case in the united states mm. you can win the popular votes but if you lose the electoral college you would also lose the presidential race mm. and that's why we see that for for instance based on the, the breakdown 538 electors are selected by the various states with a certain commitment and a pledge for them to vote a particular way mm. and then based on this electors 538 of them they're distributed across the united states the most states that have the winner takes all system in fact have a lot of their electors going voting in a particular way that's why you see a lot of the swing states being the major focus of the candidates going into the dying embers of the campaign period mm. wisconsin where where i was privileged to have been can't get to see the sponsorship of the united states government under the mandela washington fellowship it's it's a, it's a swing state mm. madison is a college town milwaukee is a heavy politically oriented campaign ground mm. you see a lot of the candidates in fact trump and and kamala harris spent quite some time in milwaukee because that's been one, proven to be one of the areas to to watch going into any election in the united states as well and you have candidates having to win at least 270 of the 538 to guarantee uh victory in this okay. election right and so that's uh, when you're talking about the electoral college and the fact that the fact that you have majority supporting you Absolutely. or voting for you does not mean you're going to win. Going the same away. thing happened when uh, Hillary Clinton was also trying to win. Everybody, almost everybody, including mm. posters, said that Hillary was going to win. But then it turned out after the electoral uh, college votes were counted, the situation was totally different. Sure. And that's what we see here. And in fact, in 2016, it, it played out the same way. Yeah. And I'm just going to go back in there because when Hillary, based on the popular votes, count 
Look, there was a lot of joy amongst her supporters, only then for us to see something else play out yeah. as well. But look, this election is close to call and, and one that even posters have put not less than one percentage point difference as to who's going to win or lose. So you ask the question about why this is tight, um, a, a close race. And we've seen those factors play out going into this election because you know, Trump is not new. Mm. He's a candidate that people know. He lost the 2020 elections for a number of reasons. He believes that he could have won. But then again, the economy is one of three major issues going into this election, the economy, immigration, abortion. And a number of the United States, citizens, if you speak to the business community, they gravitate towards him because he's coming in with that business acumen, a business background. And in fact, he's been against the establishment for quite a while now. So Washington mm. itself has his own position about Donald Trump. But then again, if you look at how the dollar performed during his period as presidency, you would understand why the business community is gravitating towards him that much. All right. So that's Alfredo Kansi joining us. So let's also introduce our guest now who will be part of this bigger conversation of the entire U.S. and their elections. And we here at your election command center are also very keen in following the development as it unfolds. We have Professor Enoch Opoku Enfi, who is a governance expert. Uh, he's also a Ghanaian and a U.S. citizen and leads the Ghanaian community in Wisconsin and Ohio. Thank you so much. I mean, we couldn't have gotten a better person to join us for this conversation. I am thrilled to be here. Yeah, good morning to you as well. Uh, first of all, I'm sure having been home, you've interacted with a number of Ghanaians, uh, you know, and, and what, what sense do you get from them about the elections? I think that this is quite historic uh, for us to be almost having a woman as the first president of uh, America, the greatest nation on earth. The issue is that her color has been a contentious one, mm. whether she's black or an Indian, but I don't think that matters now. I think she's really done a good job within the short time frame that Joe Biden handed over to her and the way she's been doing well in the post. This morning I was looking at CNN Post, and CNN Post really worked well because the posters do a great job. The Kamala Harris supporter was saying that, you know, some people are not sampled, but in academia, you cannot sample everybody. You can't talk to every voter. Right. So what we do is that we sample, and any time you sample, that's what we call the sampling error. Mm. So when CNN did the sampling, they found that Kamala, based on popular votes, is leading by 51%, and then, uh, Trump will be getting 47%. But any time you sample, because there's a sample error, we mm. do a plus or minus three. So Kamala can get 54%, okay. which is 51 plus three, mm. or she can get 48%, which is 48 plus three to be 51. Mm. In the same way, Trump with 47 can get 44, which is minus three, or he can get 50%, which is plus three. Plus three. Okay. So I first said something that I want to add to it. In 1884, there was Glover Cleveland, who has been the first president in America to come back again and win. Right. So that means that There's... Trump will be second if he wins this election. Right. But uh, Kamala is also leading Trump in, in adverts. Right. You yeah. know, yeah. by $3 million, $300 million. Wow. That means that she spent a lot, That's you right. know, in the media. Then the issue is the 66, probably around 70% voter turnout. Mm. If people don't turn out, especially the youth don't turn out, then Trump can win. Mm. Because when it comes to election all over the world, you have the older population going to vote. I voted in America many times where we go, you see, most of the older population, they don't the do key. the mail voting or they don't do the email voting. I did email voting. So okay. you, you command the email and then they will send your voting number to you. And then you vote and then you send it to the uh, vote polling centers. Mm. Now those who mail in, it comes to your mailbox. You also check those you want to vote for and then it goes back. Mm. Then we have those who want to be present mm. to vote. Most of the old folks like it that with a traditional way, yeah. old fashioned. Yeah. You go, make sure that you're, you know, it counts, you take, and then the scanner, you scan it through, mm. you know that yes, it's going to be counted for you. But, but the good news is that those who go face to face are counted first. Mm. Ah, before the right. mail in. Before the mail in. Yes. So that those, you know, we give uh, privilege to those who go in first. Right. Now, talking about the electoral votes, you know, during the process of selecting individuals for any political party, the same thing happens, the caucus. Mm. So the Iowa caucus, we say that we give all our vote to this candidate. Right. And then the main, but Iowa has got only three electoral college. Mm. That is why they are all centered at the swing states. Okay. So Wisconsin, that he was at Madison, that I've stayed there for a long time, mm. 
Wisconsin has got 11 electoral college votes. Okay. And you need it. The last elections, Trump was there in 2020 seven yeah. times, and yet he lost. Wow. Joe Biden wasn't there many times because Wisconsin is all white. Trump. In fact, the minority in Wisconsin are Chinese mock. Trump. Right. Chinese more, not blacks. And the Red Indians. Yes, and the Red yeah, Indians. Yeah, so you don't have blacks yeah. in that population, okay. in that Wisconsin state. It's all white. Mm -hmm. That I was lecturing there as a professor in leadership. Right. So you can tell that if you win Wisconsin, which is a top up state, uh, Pennsylvania, which is also a toss up, which we call the purple state, mm -hmm. and then Michigan, then you know that you are getting there because we have the red states. Mm -hmm. You know, the red state, you win. Whether you like for, it or for not, they vote for... And then we have the blue state that, that is already there for Democrats. It's like mm. Ashanti region and voters. Yes. Region. So they don't campaign there. much there in your stronghold because you know you have the vote. Mm. But then they go to the swing states where you can convince them because it's the swings that makes you reach the magic number of 270. Right. And would, yes, you agree, right. would you agree that had Biden stepped down much earlier... It would have been a clear win for Kamala. You think if she had started her campaign uh, much earlier than she did, it would have been the story would have been different. Where we would have said today that her win margin or the percentage of leading the polls would have been much higher. I think that you know when I was in Ohio and a Ghana Association president, I was with the Center for Progressive Leadership by Democrats, and I nearly stood for mayor. Mm. You know that time our mayor was uh, Harry Springler, Jerry Springler. Mm. Oh, was yeah. a mayor in Cincinnati. Right. And that time was about to contest. But then we have this LGBT issue that came out, and that is why I dropped out of the race. Right. So Joe Biden has been somebody who has really served all his life, over 50 years in public life. He lost his wife, he lost his children, everything he lost hmm. in serving his nation. And he reminds me of the first president of America, you know, George Washington, who said that, ladies and gentlemen, I've grown gray and my eyes always blind, almost blind, in serving my country. Mm. So Trump lived, no, I'm talking about Joe Biden, from Delaware, where he was less than 30 years before he became a senator, served all his life. And he's so selfless that when Obama won and then we had a financial crisis, Joe Biden was the one selected to bring bipartisan agreement between the two political parties. So Joe has been somebody who is a unifier mm. and he served all his life. But Age, age caught up with him yeah. and even though he wanted to drop out the wife said you can do it joe you can do it joe so remember when he won the last election in 2020 he had to walk to the stage yeah and run yeah. for to people to know that, that know that he's not that old that's a reminder that is that's a reminder <laughs> no, uh, issue uh, right absolutely people will ask like you similarities to, to, are to run yeah. to show because it's all about showism right you know politics now is about showing to the people but it, I think that Kamala, like I began saying, has mm. done really well within the short time frame that she's really made a face out there because Trump tied her okay. to all the policies of uh, uh, Joe Biden. And now the biggest issue is, is gun control security. Mm. You know, mm. when, when I was there, the National Rifle Association lobbied a lot. And the National Rifle Association said that, you know, you have kids. Everybody in America have guns. It's mm. a country of guns. Mm. And not only do you have guns in your, in your hall, you have some in your bedroom. And when you're cutting your grass, you also have some there, just in case somebody intrude on your land. Mm. You That's... see? So now mm. students naively will pick parents' guns and then take it to school, high school students, and they will start shooting. Wow. So the issue is that let's have some gun controls. We need some background checks. If you are perching or stay with your parents, you don't have access okay. to guns. Mm -hmm. Right. But I mean, then the National Rifle Association said that why not all professors also have guns? And imagine me teaching in a classroom and then, you know, touch here is a gun. What kind of gangster professor will I be? <laughs> See? I like the way you put it, gangster <laughs> professor. But uh, we, we, we definitely will be wrapping up this conversation shortly. We've also engaged a number of people, regular uh, Americans and people on the streets of the U.S. to find out what they make of the election. So let's pick their thoughts briefly. Then we'll come and wrap up the conversation with Prof in the studio. For us, um, I'm not saying it's going to be a change overnight, but I'm saying it's a step in the right direction. Um, obviously, as a woman, that was a huge priority for me that our rights were protected. Um, and so this election to me means a difference between women having, you know, protected rights over our reproductive system to like not having those rights. Um, so yeah, I don't, I'm excited. I'm hopeful. Um, so we'll see what happens. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a oh, thank you so much. So you, you, you told me your name and uh, why you're here. My name is Allison Paul. I'm here because I'm making sure people know about the New York Equal Rights Amendment um, to protect us here in this state, preserve the right to abortion, and protect us from other forms of discrimination that we see sweeping across this nation. It's interesting how people can freely say, I vote for NDC or NPP mm. in the U.S. but they can't do that in Ghana. And, and in fact, and that's with us. Let's they, they will also yes. say the polls, raise questions about the yes. polls because, you know, here in Ghana, you know, if you coming out to say you, vote for, you would vote for the NPP or the NDC would attract they will target. some, yeah, yeah, some yeah. vilification they and insult. Yeah. That is so, the immaturity with our yes, democracy. Yes, so our and, democracy is so young. We'll get out there. Some of us who have seen bigger democracies, mm. how can you say this professor is a Democrat mm. professor or this mm. professor is a Republican professor? And you know, it, it doesn't make sense because right. the he, he earned his degree mm. before the, even the political party. And the political party doesn't speak through anybody. Right. So we'll right, get there. Right. But I think it works for these kind of politics, immature mm. politics, where okay. people tag others with political parties and then, uh, you know, uh, use it against them. But you see, the issues there is pro-life, pro-choice. Mm. And when people talk about abortions, it's not really that way. Mm. Political parties are two sides of persuasions. They all want to serve the country, but they have different philosophies. Mm. Now, Republicans are saying that if you get pregnant, either by accident or intentionally, and your life is at risk, don't abort the baby, let the baby come. Mm. Now, Democrats are saying that if I already have four kids, and I'm pregnant and my life is at risk, and I might lose my life you and the life of the baby, and I still have already three kids, then I have the right to choose. Right. You know, True. to That's let that baby go to take care of. So pro-choice. Okay. And that is the issue. But then also <sighs> immigration is going to be one of the biggest issues here mm. in these elections. Mm. Because New Yorkers are thinking that the Mexicans are, are crossing over. over. If you go okay. to Texas, it's the same issues. Mm. And then they came illegally and they're coming to take their jobs right. when Americans are working. So well, it, it is going to be boiled down be, to these It issues. will be great to see how all of these thorny subjects are translated into the vote at the end of the day.